Uh, talking of memory, memory seems to me, at least, to be a central sort of theme or motif in your novels. Mm. There's, there's either personal memory or cultural memory or memories at the center of families that are being disputed, lost or secreted somewhere. Uh, do you agree with that? Or? Oh, absolutely, yeah. And I think memory is what makes us. In a sense, we have to remember who we are each morning when we wake up. You know, we've spent this time sort of semi-unconscious during the night, and it's only as you remember who you are each, each morning. That you, we are our memories. We are the, the memories of everything that's happened to us in our, in our lives, you know, from the womb uh, onwards. And it's our memories that, that make us. Obviously, you know, genes matter as well, in a sense. You know, genetic inheritance is a, is a form of, you know, uh, uh, sort of hard memory, in, in a sense. Um, that's, I suppose that's more of a metaphor than a, than a really useful sort of idea, perhaps. But do you know what I mean? It's, we're all about, the, the, we are, in a sense, in, in encodings of information. This is what we represent, this collection of cells, you know, this bringing together of all this you know, matter that's basically existed you know, for the past 13.7 billion years. It happens to be, you know, for the moment, for an you know, embarrassingly short time, it's together in our, our bodies, you know, as entities, and part of that, that matter is in our, in our brains and codes the memories that make us who we are. So, yeah, I think memory is absolutely paramount, and that's why it's great fun to work with and great fun to, to muck around with when you're writing science fiction. You know. Do you think it's essential... Uh, it's essentially connected to narrative in some way and to write yes, fiction. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, in a sense, we, we are our, again. We are our narratives. You know, we have a narrative of our own lives, of our own, of what, even what we might regard as our own destinies, or whatever. You know, our ambitions, our, our, our goals, or whatever, uh, our fears as well. And so we we embody uh, the, the idea of narration in our in our lives, regardless of whether you're you're a writer or you even read fiction at all. Uh, or, or read, you know, we, narrative is in a sense what we're very much about as, as human beings. Mm. Um, um, you're often billed as an imaginative writer, as, as, as with imaginative in quotation marks, mm. uh, meaning really that you're not, or suggesting that you're not an autobiographical novelist, mm. really. Um, and I'm just wondering, do personal memories at all play any part at all in your novels? Very, very slight. I mean, uh, the one I've um, mentioned was in Crow Road, where uh, there's a phenomenon that uh, Prentice, the central character, spots. And this comes from when I was watching Top of the Pops, like, you know, 30, whatever, years ago, with my mum and dad. We were sitting on the couch watching Top of the Pops. And I was humming along, and I noticed a, a certain frequency as I hummed. The screen sort of, sort of shook, and I thought, it's really weird, that's really strange, what's going on? And I sort of got and I found the precise frequency, and I thought, that's amazing! I've got a superpower. You know, I can affect televisions. You know, cathode rays, oscilloscopes, whatever. For this is, and Mum, Dad, watch this. Mm, I've got exactly the right note. And they both looked at me and said, "You on drugs or something?" You know, and, and no, look. You know, now eventually I worked out what was happening was that particular note must have been around about 24, 25 hertz, and I was actually vibrating my own eyeballs at the same, <laughs> <laughs> the same refresh rate as the screen. You know, was oh dear. Um, <laughs> so I mean, that was used in um, that idea was used in Crow Road. But the point is not just to use these things. Just say, "Ha ha, isn't that funny?" Uh, in that case, it was used as a kind of metaphor, uh, a sort of anti-religious metaphor, saying that things that you are absolutely convinced are happening in the outside world have got nothing to do with you in a sense, or that uh, that appear to be action at a distance. It's all in your head. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, but beside that, not really. And, and there's almost a form of professional pride involved there that. Um, uh, and there's nothing wrong with you know, the con conventional, you know, uh, confessional novel or whatever. But um, there's some great work being done. But for me, it's a, it is a matter of pride to you know, know I made it all up. You know, this is my job. This is what I do. There must be small individual bits of uh, people I've met or things that have happened to me that are kind of mixed in there. But uh, it's the difference between uh, you know putting. Uh, a lot of ingredients into forget forget word processing forget think about food processing think about a food processor you put a lot of ingredients into a food processor uh, and sort of give it a quick pulse and you can still tell what's in there if there's a lot of fruit you can say oh there's a bit of banana that's orange you know and so on um, and that's the way a lot of uh, writers work the way a lot of uh, confessional writers work you can still see huge gobbets of their, 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 their life in there the way I work is I keep my finger pressed down for about five minutes you know so you just get this goo it's still right. made of the stuff that, that you know was in there but it's so mixed up and so re recreated that there's, uh, there's little they can really identify no. Do you, do you ever get surprised by things that you recognise that you didn't realise were from your own past? Or Very it? rarely. I mean, it happens, yeah. Um, in the same way, I don't really, it's only happened to me once that a character's not done what they're supposed to do at a certain point in the book. There's a very strong-willed 
a lady called Cheryl in one of the uh, the non-culture SF novels, and there was one point where she, she was supposed to be getting sort of browbeaten and intimidated, and she just so sort of, I just found her strangely suddenly standing up to her oppressor. I thought oh, that's really cool. This is what it's like, you know. Uh, there was a bit of me going, how dare she? You <laughs> know, it's just a character. You're not supposed to be have a mind of your own. Um, yeah, so it doesn't, you know, doesn't. That's not really, you know, normally the case. I'm not usually surprised because it is fairly well worked out mm. in advance. I've kind of have spent the last three months before I, I set, you know, the first um, proper mm. uh, keystroke, you know, going that uh, I've, I've kind of thought of it all. There, there seems to be quite a personal um, regard for landscape on occasion, Scottish landscapes especially. Mm. In there, I suppose that's autobiographical in a way, is it? Oh yeah, uh -huh. and that's. Um, I was brought up in North Queensbury uh, for the first nine years of my life anyway, and uh, it's, uh, it's like three quarters of an island, it's a little sort of promontory, and uh, so it's got a very definite place and situation, you know, it's, mm. uh, it's right on the River Forth, uh, looks out you know, south towards of, uh, Edinburgh, and um, it had the, the Forth Bridge, the, the rail bridge, you know, just starting out from there and heading across or finishing, whatever. Um, and so you're very, very aware, even as a quite small child, you had this incredible, this, at the time, even more sort of a, a famous worldwide symbol of Victorian, you know, British engineering excellence, you know, literally casting a shadow over you, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and that kind of placed you and, um, and it gave, gave you a very strong idea of where, where you lived and uh, its significance. Um, and also, in a sense, a, a, a perhaps unwarranted sense of, of privilege, that, you know. You, people, you know, people throughout the world, you would say, "Well, I live beside this famous landmark." You know, um, so yeah, I think just uh, and uh, just also walking, hill walking, still matters to me a lot. I, I love going hill walking by myself, you know, just partly for the solitude. But I just love looking at that, that landscape, you know, and I just like the kind of scenery we have in Scotland. Happily, you know, if I like deserts, it might have a problem. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just wondering this thing about memory. Many of your novels are intricately plotted. They move backwards and forwards in time. Um, does that ever pose a problem of memory, where you, whereby you forget where your characters are, or what they've done, how much they know of each other, and things like Again, that? Again, not if the plan's working out properly. They should no. all be fairly, you know, well worked out. Um, uh, so it r really, really happens. I mean, uh, especially now, I mean, I've done it for so long, you know, that um, I've got reasonably good at it over the over the decades. You know, I've been doing this, so no, nothing like that really tends to happen. You know. Um, I mean, you could argue that maybe it should, maybe it'd be more interesting if stuff like that did happen and it suddenly went in different directions I wasn't anticipating, but that's what younger writers are there for, you know, as, as some, you know I've long since you know, ceased to be a young Turk or whatever, uh, uh, so I think you, you kind of expect you know, that, that older writers will kind of gradually collapse into their dotage and get a bit boring, and, but there'll always be a, you know, uh, subsequent generations of young writers that come over and you know, sort of kick over the traces, and that's, that's the way it should be. Thank you.